Hi, this is a video lecture for EC153 where we will be putting it all together. So that is interrupts and timers. So our coverage is basically that using multiple peripherals, uh, namely change notification and timers and multiple interrupts together. So again, our challenge is to create code wherein each positive edge on our input will toggle the output bit. So, and our input is from a mechanical switch which has a bounce time of 5 milliseconds. So again, switch bouncing is when whenever we activate a switch, our contacts don't uh, get in stable contact immediately they uh, since they are mechanical in nature they will be bouncing for a certain period of time so what we want is whenever we see the switch activated we wait for a certain number uh we wait for some time before we actually consider it as being pressed so our game plan would be to model this as a state machine so our first state is waiting for the change notification. Then once we receive the change notification, we will be waiting for a certain amount of time for the debounce of the switch. Then lastly, after the debounce time has expired, we check if we want to acknowledge that the button has been pressed. And then once it's pressed, it's up to main to do whatever it wants. Then uh, since after defining our states, is we determine what our peripherals should be doing for each state. What will be change notification and what will be our timer status for each of these states. And the next is we define the ISRs that will allow us to switch, uh, allow us to switch between the states properly. And then lastly, we define what our main subroutine or what our main routine should be doing at each state. So we here uh, we have the three states waiting, the bounds, and pressed, uh, labeled one, two, and three. So when we are waiting, we want the timer to be off and the interrupt to be off since we're not using it, and then enabling our CN interrupt. So in code, this will look like this. So T1 is zero, interrupt enable for T1 is zero, and then our change notification is enabled after we click the flag. <clears throat> and then lastly, we set the state as equal to one. So state will be our global variable or semaphore, which will be accessed by all our subroutines. So for state two, this is when we are waiting for the debounce time of our switch. So we should turn our timer on and then enable its interrupt so that we know that, uh, so we can know when the timer expires. And then during this time, since the switch is bouncing, or we assume that our switch is bouncing, our change notification interrupts should be disabled unless we want it to be uh <clears throat> triggered every time the switch bounces. So for our debound state, it will uh, our debound state function would look something like this. Our interrupt enable for the CN change notification is zero. Then we pre preemptively turn off the timer first before we reset it. For example, maybe some other parts of the program is using it, and then we turn it on. Then we clear the flag before we enable our interrupt for timer 1. And then lastly, we set the state as equal to 2. Next is our pressed state wherein uh, we waited for the change interrupt and then we waited for the debounce time and we decided or we have determined that the input or the key or the button has been indeed pressed for our input port 
So at this time, we are just actually waiting for main to acknowledge that an input has been entered into the system. So, so all of our peripherals are actually disabled and interrupts are off. So that would just look something like this. T1 is zero, interrupt enables for both T1 and CN are zero. And then we set our state as equal to three. So how do we go from state to state? So when we are waiting, we are actually waiting for a change notification interrupt. And when we get this interrupt, we check if it is a positive edge change in our input. And if it is, we go to the debound state. Otherwise, we go back to waiting. So our CNISR will be fulfilling this row. And then it will look something like this. So after clearing the flag, it checks if it is in a waiting state. If it is, since uh, we may never know if other parts of the program are using the change notification uh, ISR. So whenever we know that we are in a waiting state and we see that our port a is high, that means it's a positive edge, we go to the debounce state. Otherwise, we go back to the waiting state. Now, during the debounce, we are waiting for our timer interrupt. And then, if our input is still high, we say that we are in a pressed state. Otherwise, we go back to waiting. So our T1 ISR would fulfill this, and then it should look something like this. The inter flag is cleared. Uh, and then we check if our state is equal to 2, or if we are in a debound state. We check for part A, if it's still high. If it's still high, we go to the pressed state. Otherwise, we go back to the waiting state. Then lastly, going from pressed to waiting, it's uh, done by the main, uh, main routine. So our main routine will look something like this. So configuration subroutines. And then we initially set it at waiting. And then in our main loop for our main routine, whenever we see that the state is equal to 3, we trigger or we toggle the output pin and then go back to the waiting state so uh, therefore completing the loop so the whole process will look something like this so and then that's it we have created a program that uses two interrupts for the timers and change notification. And a couple of notes. So our functions may look somewhat redundant, but are necessary especially when things get more complex. So the check if uh, whether we're in a waiting state or the bound state or a press state is always there in our ISRs, just to make sure that the ISRs are being used for what they are really needed for. And then that's the, and then next is, uh, using a state machine approach is not always necessary, but I think it will be helpful most of the time. So in summary, uh, a framework was presented for managing multiple interrupts and peripherals, uh, interrupts and peripherals using state machines. So this could be extended for more complex systems that you may want to implement. And then we also have made for ourselves an interrupt-based input debound subroutine that we may be able to use in the future. So that is all for this video lecture. Thank you for your time and have a good day.